What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 more tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Power 5G. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a quick way to put your display to sleep. Now this feature is not on by default, so to enable it, go to settings. From here, go to gestures. Then from here, go to where it says put display to sleep. So again, as you can see, it is off right now, but if we enable it, go back to your home screen. And then from here, all you have to do is double tap it on a blank spot. So like this, and it goes right to sleep. And keep in mind, again, it does have to be a blank spot. If you do it on like a widget, it's not gonna do it. So again, on the home screen, double tap a blank spot. And there we go. Now the next thing I want to show you is actually in the same gesture menu, and this feature is called jump to lock screen. So again, from the gesture menu, as you can see right here, jump to lock screen, go here, turn it on, and this is actually pretty similar to the previous feature, except instead of putting your display to sleep, you're basically going to be waking it up. So if we lock the display, double tap on the screen, and it's going to go right to your lock screen. So definitely not the most crazy features ever, but when you have them enabled, they do make things a bit more convenient. Now I'm going to show you a feature called night light. Now this feature is going to tint your screen in a slightly warmer color, and this is going to filter out stuff like blue light and make it a bit easier on your eyes. As you can probably tell by the name of the feature, it's really meant to be used at night, but you can really use it anytime. And if you are going to be on your phone a lot, it definitely is a great option to have. So for this, like always, go to settings. From here, go to display, and nightlight is right here, toggle it on, and as you can see the screen does look a tiny bit warmer, and then if you go here, you can change the intensity, and you can also set a schedule, so you can have it turn on from sunset to sunrise, or a custom time. In addition to this, if you ever want to turn this feature on or off really quickly without even going to the settings, all you have to do is swipe down twice from the top of your screen, so one, two, and nightlight is right here. And then if you press and hold, you can open the settings too. Now I'm going to show you how to use the sidebar. Now the sidebar is basically a little shortcut panel, kind of similar to Samsung's Edge panel, and it's going to give you quick access to a bunch of different apps, so pretty cool. To get to this feature, go to settings. From here, go to gestures. Then from here, go to sidebar. And as you can see, by default, it will be off. But if you turn it on, this line is going to show up right here on the side of the screen. So to open the sidebar, no matter what you're doing on your phone, just swipe it out like this. And there we go. You can also move it around. And then of course, these are the things that show up by default, but you can change them. So if you hit this gear icon right here, you can change them out for pretty much any other app on your phone. Now I'm going to show you how to change your home screen style. Now by default, like pretty much any Android phone, essentially this phone is going to have your main home screen, so you can put whatever apps and widgets you want on this. And if you swipe up, of course, it's going to open your app drawer, which has pretty much every app on your phone. But in addition to this, you can also get rid of your app drawer. So instead of having like a separate app drawer with all your apps, you can have all your apps on the home screen itself. Kind of like the old iOS design, which for some people might be a little messy, but if you want it like this, all you have to do is press and hold your finger on a blank spot on the home screen, so like this. Then from here, go to home settings. From here, go to home screen style. And again, as you can see, it's going to be app tray, or I called it app drawer, same thing. But this is the default setting, but you can also change it to open, which is going to show pretty much all the apps on your screen. Again, in my opinion, it's a bit messy, and I personally wouldn't do it like this, but if you ever do want to show everything on your home screen, it is an option. The next thing I'm going to show you is a quick way to open split screen. Now like I showed you in a previous video, the main way to open split screen is simply by going to your recent apps, press and hold on the icon of whatever you want on top, so like this, hit split top, select your second app, and there we go. So this is split screen, you can resize it however you want, and to get out of it, swipe it all the way up or all the way down. Now that was easy enough, but there is a shortcut that's a bit quicker and more convenient. So to get to this, go to settings. Then from settings, go to gestures. And then finally from this menu, go to where it says swipe to split. So right here, toggle it on. And now with this feature on, to open split screen, all you have to do is swipe like this. Then select your second app. And there we go. So I'm gonna do that one more time just in case you missed it. So basically swipe from left to right to left. So like this, select the second app. And there we go again. 
And the actual direction doesn't really matter, so you can do right to left to right, as long as you go from one side to the other to the first side. So let's try it from the other side. So like this, there we go. So definitely a cool shortcut. Now I wanna show you a couple different screen color settings. To get to these, go to settings. From here, go to display. Then from here, go to where it says colors. So by default, it will be set to saturated, which basically makes your colors a bit stronger. So if you're doing something like watching a video, for example, or maybe playing a game or really doing anything where image quality is a bit more important, the colors are gonna be a bit stronger and overall just a bit more saturated. And while this personally looks really good in my opinion, you might want it to be a bit more natural. So if you don't want things to be super bright and vivid, you can change it to natural. And this is gonna make things look a bit more normal. You can also change the color temperature. So if you want it a bit warmer or a bit cooler, so not really a ton of options here, but definitely a few things to play around with. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a screen recording. Now to do this, the first thing you're going to want to do is swipe down from the top twice. So one, two, then from here, go to where it says screen record start. So right here, this is going to come up, hit start. There's going to be a countdown. And now we are recording. So there's a toolbar up here. You can use the spot color thing. You can draw. Sound by default will be on, but you can mute it. You can also make like a selfie video, pause it. And then finally, when you're done, hit stop. And as you can see, it's saved right to the photos. There are also some screen recording settings you can change. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to display. Then from here, go to screen record at the very bottom. So right here, so you can change the selfie video size. So by default, it's gonna be small, but you can also make it a bit larger. You can change the resolution. By default, it will be 1080p, which makes sense, but if you want to save space and you don't really care that much about the quality, you can always do 720p. Record time limit. Now, you're probably not going to forget to press stop, but you can always change it to like 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or up to 60 minutes. File size limit, so another thing to save some space. And then finally, record touch points. So with this, when you make a screen recording, it's basically going to make a cursor wherever you touch. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to actually turn off the phone. Now, this might sound like a really simple, no-brainer kind of thing, but with this phone by default, when you press and hold the power key, instead of actually opening the power menu, it opens the assistant instead. Now, this is kind of annoying and I feel like hardly anyone is actually going to like this feature, or at least like this. I mean, the assistant can be opened perfectly fine by pressing and holding the home button instead, so I don't know why we need another shortcut, it just doesn't make sense. But in case you're wondering, to actually turn off this phone, first of all, if you swipe down twice from the top like you've probably seen throughout this video as I go to the settings, so one, two, next to the settings icon, there's a power icon right here. So press this, and it's going to take you right to the power menu. You can also press the power key and the volume up key. So like this, there we go. And then finally, if you just want things back to normal, what you can also do is go to settings. From here, go to gestures. Then from here, go to press and hold power key or power button or whatever. As you can see by default, hold for assistant will be on, toggle it off. And now when you press and hold the power button, it's gonna open the power menu like normal. And then finally, the last thing I'm gonna show you is yet another shortcut for the camera. Now this is honestly a really cool feature in my opinion, but to activate it, basically what you're gonna do is open the camera app. From here, go to settings. From here, go to capture settings. Then from here, go to quick capture. And make sure this is enabled. You can also specify what camera is open. So you can do auto, so basically if you close the camera on your front facing camera, it's going to open on that and same with the rear camera. Or you can have it always open the rear camera, or you can have it always open the front facing camera. But essentially, with quick capture enabled, to open your camera, all you have to do is go like this. And there we go. So one more time in case you missed it. So definitely a nice feature. And keep in mind, it does also work when the display is locked. So as you can see, it is locked right now, but it still opens right up. But those were 10 more tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Power 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.